Hello community! Today we are have a look at a new application from Sentence Transformers Espert. The new application is called SetFit. Let me show you the idea. You already know that Espert is really capable of a lot of things and today we're going to focus on a few short learning tasks. This means simple text classification. So, what you know. As part, we can apply it for a semantic similarity of sentences, for a semantic search task. As part, we can apply for clustering huge amount of sentences, millions of sentences, discover the topics of the sentences. We can use as part for paraphrase meaning. But what the hell is the meaning of few shot learning and why should we use as part for it? Why is it better? And against what system is it competing? So. Welcome to July 2020. There was a beautiful publication by OpenAI and they introduced the GPT-3 model. But the title of the publication was Language Model of Few Shot Learners. What does this mean? Now, we have three possible settings here for our in-context learning. The first is zero shot. In the model, you have just a task description. Here in our example, it is translate English to French. And then you provide the system with a single prompt, an English word. And you expect the system to give you in reply the corresponding French word. This is what we call zero shot. The second is one shot learning. Now, in addition to the task description, the model sees now a single example. So we have an English word and a French word, and then we give it a prompt with another English word. And we expect the system to fill out now here the corresponding word in French. Yeah, uh, of course, no gradient updates are performed during this short learning. And then we have few short learnings. And now, in addition to the task description, the model sees now several few here, three examples with an English word and a French word. Three examples, and then we give it a prompt, the English word, and we expect the system to fill out the French word for this. And on this few shot application, we're going to focus today because GPT-3 was really good in this. Now, maybe you will have or you will see other terms like few example learning instead of few shot learnings. And the whole meta structure is in context learning or ICL, where you have no gradient updates that are performed on the expert model or on the LLM model. And you have inputted, putting, prompted examples. Another wording is also few shot prompting, or we talk about prompting templates. And the reason for this I will show you in a second because we have three major problems with GPT-3. At first, those prompts that you have to provide to the system, you have to choose a clever, intelligent prompt so that the system responds in a good way. So you have prompt engineering. There are really some artists who design prompts so that you get a good result back from the system. And of course, you have huge costs of training the GPT-3 system, $100,000 plus. And then when we do the inference, you have huge costs for the infrastructure of inference with GPT-3. So what is our goal? Well, easy. We want to get rid of the prompt engineering that is very, very subjective. We want to have no huge cost of training and we want to have no high cost of inference. So we want to get rid of all three problematic factors. Welcome to SetFit. This is exactly what SetFit as a methodology sets out to do. And we're going to use our sentence transformer as bird for this task. Ah, now you guessed it. Now, with SBIRT, you know we have the supervised learning and the unsupervised learning. We are here definitely in the supervised learning area. So we have to create a learning training data set. So we, sh we show the system in our learning training data set what we want to fine tune our SBIRT model on this specific task. And you know, with SBIRT, we have a vector embedding of our sentences and we have a vector embedding of similar sentence pairs. And we want to have those vectors close in a vector space. And for dissimilar sentences, the vector embedding should be pushed in other faraway regions of our feature space. 
so that we have here, if you want on the left hand side, we have here an area with the similar sentence pairs, and on the right hand side we have an area of dissimilar sentences. Very easily explained. Now, how to do this? Well, to build up our own training data set that is specific for this task, it is easy. We do something that we already know how to do. We have to build positive and negative sentence pairs, where the positive sentence pairs are two sentences chosen randomly from the same class. Let's say, that what is a class? If you think about pictures, if, if you see have pictures of a dog, the class is dog, and a different class would be cat. So from the same class, we have the positive sentence pairs and we have negative sentence pairs for, that are two sentences chosen randomly from different classes. One picture is of the, of the class dog and one picture is of the class cat. And we do this in NLP, so we have sentences. So yes, now there is something you have to be clear of. We have to manually select what classes we want. This is the reason why we provide the system with a training data set. So we say, hey, I want to distinguish all sentences. I don't know if it's a movie review, the movies that have in a classification, a text classification task, a very good, a positive review, and the movies that have a negative review given the sentences. Or you can even build multi-class and multi-label text classification with SetFit. Let me show in the next video when we code everything. If you want to already know how you create your data set, this is the thumbnail of one of my videos. It is about SBIRT, when I create my own data set. And this is an in detail, in depth video, coding in Python, your own data set. If you look for it, the title is SBIRT35. So if you search SBIRT35 in my channel, you find this video. Now, we use now, for demonstration purposes, two datasets that are also available, that are famous, everybody knows about them, and this is SST2 and Raft. Raft, maybe you are not so familiar with this, is a few-shot classification benchmark, exactly what we are looking for. And it is designed to match 11 real-world scenarios, and they restrict the number of training samples to maximum 50 label examples per task. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We do not want to have this huge LLM of GPT-3. We want to have just maybe, I don't know, 20 to 50 labeled examples, or maybe even less. And we want to have an outperformance of GPT-3 models. And we can validate then our model that we're going to build with the SSD2, the validation data set, the Stanford tree data set. And this is, of course, part of the Clue benchmark data set you are familiar with. So this is where you can find it on Hugging Face. You have the data set SST2. If you search for it, you can download it over there. And the other side is the data set Raft from Hugging Face. And you can also download it directly from Hugging Face. And in the next video, we will do exactly this with our code. So here we go. Now that we have our data set, now we fine-tune our pre-trained SBIRT model. And please notice, we are going to use a pre-trained SBIRT model. Then we have now our training data set. And now we fine-tune our pre-trained SBIRT model with our very specific training data set and with this triplet-based training data set. So fine-tune starts, the system gets now gets to learn it, and I would just like to show you a visual demonstration, very simplified, but just that you get an idea what it is. Let's say this is our this uh, visualization of our sentences, the green dots are sentences that we have. And then we have sentences, pairs that are classified. And let's say we have three classes from a movie review. We have a neutral, a positive response, and a negative response. And we call these three classes C1 for class, C2, and C3. So first sentence belongs here, the red dot. This is our anchor point. This is our beginning. This is our main point, main sentence here. We have a class C1. And now it is looking for other sentences because we want to have now a sentence pair. So we have here a class, for example, 
a sentence with the class C1, and we have here a sentence, a vector in a vector representation, an embedding in with the class C1. And what's going to happen now, just to make it very easy, we have now, we construct now our S1, our S1 sentence 1, with sentence 2, both belong to the class C1, C1, and then we have another sentence, a positive sentence pair, S1 with S3, and we have the class C1, C1, so we have positive, and then we have sentence 4, and you know, you understand, and now S bird, as I told you, is trained on the pre-trained version to bring together semantically close sentences. And now that we define, if you want, a semantic addition here on a class separation, we now bring all those C1 sentence factors closer to this core sentence here that we built. So if you want, we have now our S-BIRD model that came from a semantic similarity, a cosine similarity maybe, now we slightly transform it, transform the idea to a classification similarity, and we use a pre-trained S-BIRD model on the semantic similarity to achieve some stunning results. So, this is the positive sentence pair creation, and this creates our training data set, where we can fine-tune then our SBIRT model, and with the fine-tune process, all those uh, C1 class dots come closer together, are now in a dense region in feature space in our vector space. Now, you might say, okay, and the negative pairs? Well, it is exactly the same. We have here, just for a very simple visualization, our sentence one, our anchor, our building block number one, we have the class C1, and now we connect in a negative sample to the class C2, and here C2. So we have a sentence pair, sentence one. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sentence one, sentence five, and we have class C1, C2. And then we have a pair of sentence one, sentence six, class C1, C2. And now, since these are negative sentence pairs, or dissimilar sentence pairs that do not belong to the same class, which is kind of a representation of our semantic similarity of the sentence, now in this advanced SBIRT notion, we have now a dissimilarity, and SBIRT, if it encounters dissimilar objects, wants to separate it further away. So, this uh, uh, C1 class, let's say this is anchored here, so the C2 class will be pushed away here in this specific region of the vector space with our fine-tuning of SBIRT, so we will have, if you want, a geographical uh, uh, allocation, a kind of a clustering in feature space of C2 here. And if you have multiple labels and multiple classes, you can imagine you can build multi-label, multi-class text classification systems. So, again, let me show you this in a more abstract version. We start with our pre-trained SBIRT model from Hugging Face. I'll show you the code, how to download it, how to use it in the next video, no problem. But just notice we have it ready to go, a pre-trained SBIRT model that has been trained, pre-trained on the semantic sentence similarity of, I don't know, one billion sentences. Now we take this SBIRT model, we construct our training data set, and with this training data set, we fine tune now this model that we take here, and we fine tune it now with the training data set. We let it run for, I don't know, a certain amount of time, and we get an advanced SBIRT system where the weights have changed. And now we have a fine tune SBIRT model on classification based sentence similarity. What we had here uh, hidden in the BIRT semantic here, we have now, if you want, artificially moved it a little bit to the classification based sentence similarity, since in our training data set we defined a classification label. C1, C2, this is a good movie review, this is a bad labeled movie review. And then if you have this fine-tuned SBIRT model, finally, on our classification trained, we now add a classification hat, very simple, 
And exactly this is the system that will give us a text classification in an interference process when you give an unseen text example and the system will tell us, hey, this is a sentence that indicates a good movie review. So our text classification will be the label good movie. This is the step pre-trained. We create here our specific training data set. We fine tune it on the classification based sentence similarity. And then we add just a simple standard classification head. And the whole methodology here in yellow is called set fit. This is all about it. Now, classification head in the transformer language, just if you're not familiar, what exactly does it do? You have an input dimension that comes from the SBIRT system. And this input dimension to the classification head is, of course, the output of the SBIRT model. Normally, we operate in a 768 dimensional vector space, or at least a topological space. And the output now of the classification head are, of course, the dimensions or the number of classes. If we have three classes for the movie review, neutral, positive, and negative, we have now output dimension, the number of classes. This is the whole job of the classification head to go from seven, six, eight dimension to three classes. Beautiful. So what have we achieved? We have to achieve a system that does not require any prompt for the task that we wanted to do. There's no prompt engineering. There's no clever genius that does some voodoo with the prompts. No, nothing. No verbalizer, no template, the prompt template, it just works out of the box. With SetFit, we can achieve, and this will show you in the research paper, a very high accuracy with orders of magnitude, less parameters, so less time, cheaper, much cheaper to training, much cheaper to inference than GPT-3 and outperforms GPT-3 with a number of minimal training examples. Unbelievable, how is this possible? Better than GPT-3, and we have just a minimal set of training examples. And plus it is fast. So these are the benefits why I show you here in this video the new SetFit method. Now, it is very interesting because sometimes you as a data scientist, you do not have 10,000, 100,000 training examples. If you have, I don't know, in law, you just have four, five, ten uh, I don't know how you call it, processes in law where there's an official verdict. So you have just a minimal training data set or you are working in biology and you discover a new virus and you just have, I don't know, 20 pictures of this virus or 20 whatever analysis of this virus. You do not have 500,000 samples of this virus. So whenever you have a minimal training set, set fit, is here for you and this is the beauty of this methodology so next video of course after i explain the methodology why we do it how we do it let me show you in the next video exactly how we code set fit but this is the content of the next video i say thank you for watching and i see you in the next one